As the title says, I do some taxi testing, but not without some squawks <laughs> and some issues with starting the engine. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to the hangar. <laughs> so, uh, still waiting for a bit of paperwork. Not sure why it's taking so long. Uh, shouldn't be taking this long. Uh, I spoke to somebody else. They said you should get your paperwork like the same day. So, I don't know. Curious. Everything's passed. Uh, all the uh, all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. But hey, another day or two, it's okay. I've been working on the airplane again, doing some more little things to finish up. Uh, one important thing, let's turn you around. Um, labels. Got to have labels that say experimental. And I also put one there that says no step because uh, you don't want to step on that. You'll bend that. Very, very bad. Very bad. Uh, the other thing I've been working on was I removed this uh, plate and I uh, reinstalled it. This time I uh, sealed it down with silicone, which is still curing, and then I put this weather stripping on. Couldn't get a weather stripping that would fit around. I might not keep this here because it might be too thick. So, and then I got my pitot tube installed. And there it is. And the pitot tube is uh, removable. Okay, you're gonna be sideways there, but there's the tube goes through, there's an aluminum plate. And uh, there's only two tie wraps holding that. I cut those tie wraps, I pull the tube out, or what's left of the tube if it gets broken, and then replace it, it's fronted there. Uh, I used Velcro to strap it down. I didn't want to compress the pitot tube and it's plugged in. So that's ready to go. I'm gonna put this cover on. The next thing I'm going to do today with this, that's a milestone, now that I get the pitot tube in, is I am going to uh, wheel it outside start it up um, and um, then I'm going to calibrate the compass on the EFIS and that requires uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time I'll, I'll film it I'll, uh, I'll set up a camera and a tripod and another one and I'll uh, kind of film what I'm doing here and there and um, hopefully it makes sense to everybody um, but the compass has to be uh, has to be calibrated then the compass has to be swung meaning that I've got to um, uh, check it for, you know, errors and that kind of stuff uh, when things are turned on and off. It's going to take a little while. So, and then the jury struts go on, because uh, right now the jury struts, which are these pieces that go along here, they're not on because it allows me to walk back and forth and do work in there. That, um, yeah. <laughs> without having to duck and risk bending them because they're not that strong. Uh, well, you can bend them, they're pretty thin. They're, they're meant to keep the main struts from wobbling up and down. Um, they don't really hold a whole lot of weight. Maybe they do a little bit, but uh, at any rate, um, yeah, once the jury struts go on, this that means the airplane is going to be on the taxi tests and the flying and that kind of stuff. So uh, that's the very last thing I put on is the jury struts. So, um, yeah, um, thank you very much for following along. And uh, for all the people who said thanks and congratulations on uh, me passing my, uh, my flight test, you're welcome. I appreciate it. I, I really do. Uh, glad to see that everybody's following along. And uh, uh, yeah, Jason, I think you're doing yours right as I'm recording this, maybe. Um, good luck with yours. And, uh, um, you know, once I get this thing uh, in the air and, and I do some flying and get used to it, you've got a lot more time in a Challenger than I do. I got a lot more time in a Piper Warrior and a Piper Cherokee and a bid in a 172, and, uh, but I don't have any time in a Challenger, especially one on floats. But once I get enough time, um, I'd like to uh, uh, follow a flight plan south of the border and come visit some people. That would be fun. If it happens this year, that'd be great. <laughs> but I'm really honestly thinking it's probably gonna happen next year. And I think because there's still you know, a lot for me to learn, especially flying this thing. So anyways, uh, I will be back when I wheel this thing outside. Uh, I'm just doing some little cosmetic things. And one thing that really bothers me out of change uh, with these doors, uh, if, if you do put doors on, and, and so one, one thing I noticed on here, I haven't met, made any changes at all, but See the sharp edge? This is right at eye level. Not good. I'm going to 
round it off on the back, on both sides. Don't want to poke my eye out. <laughs> so yeah, that's so I'm going to do that in about five minutes, but I'm not going to bother filming that because it's just me grinding plastic. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make that round. It doesn't need to be sharp. It, it ends up down there. It doesn't need to be a sharp corner. I'm going to round that off. So uh, if I bump into it, I bump into it, but I don't, it's, it's it, it really is a, is a sharp point. So anyways, be back in a, in a jiffy with you guys. And, uh, and you'll be seeing this probably outside when this cut, maybe not, we'll see. I never know how these things are going to go together. I don't have like a storyboard or a plan. I just hit record and, and go. So be back in a jiffy. Six and a half hours late. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, I'm not outside uh, calibrating the compass because, well, not all things went as planned. I got everything else I wanted done, done. But the engine wouldn't start. I thought, okay, yeah, it's been sitting like for months. And all right, so I may have flooded or something. And um, so I pulled the spark plugs and yeah, they were soaked and drained them, cleaned them, put them back in, still wouldn't start. Oh, yeah. I pulled the float bowls off the carbs. They were full of two-stroke oil, not a drop of gas, two-stroke oil. And so I'm going, oh, shit. So what had happened was during the winter, the, um, the oil system was just ever so gently dripping one drop at a time, and it, it filled up the float bowls. And it also spilled over and filled up the, um, uh, the tops of the cylinders, that kind of stuff. So I cleaned all that out and it still wouldn't start. But by that time I had drained the battery down, I charged it up. It wasn't charged fully and um, I'm going to leave it right now and I'm going to come back to it tomorrow. But um, uh, as of right now, I didn't get the compass calibrated. Uh, I could have done that without the engine running. Um, but I got so focused on why the hell is my engine not starting? And, and it was because it sat all winter and, uh, and it was like soaked in oil. And so I might pull the carbs out and clean the carbs and then put them back on. And when I do that, I'll also check to make sure that I get spark. And, um, you know, so uh, that, that won't be hard to do, um, but it needs to be done. And, um, and I'll do that when, with a full battery. I got a charger on right now. It's going to go overnight. And so the battery will be fully charged because when I first started, it wasn't fully charged either. It had been used quite a bit for other things and the charger was never put on it. So, yeah, I should know better. Uh, so, um, Note to self, uh, when engine sits for anything more than you know, like two, three months, pull the plugs and check to make sure that oil hasn't leaked down from the oil injection system and uh, flooded everything. Um, yeah, I wonder if anybody else has ever experienced that with these engines. Um, and uh, I've changed the banjo bolts two years ago because they're supposed to have a little check valve in there that prevents that from happening. They're both brand new. Hmm. We'll have to see. Anyways, um, yeah, sorry, uh, you don't get to see me uh, calibrating the compass uh, like I thought it would. Um, so, hey, it doesn't always go as planned. So I was also going to maybe do some taxi tests. I can do that, uh, but no, none of that's happening today. Tomorrow's another sunny day, I think. Uh, either way, I'm coming back here and, and I'm going to clean the plugs again, and I'm probably going to pull the carbs and clean them and um, and then reassemble everything, um, and that should do it. Uh, and check for spark. Uh, you never know, something could break over, you know, things break when they just sit. Why, I don't know. You know, you turn something off, it runs beautifully, you go back to it two weeks later and it doesn't work. Why? <laughs> uh, has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me. And it's happened to me on engines before too. I don't know. But, I don't know, there's dual spark plugs and dual coils and dual everything. So uh, I will check for spark, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm kind of disheartened. I'm just going to wrap this up, clean up in here, and uh, go home, wash up, and meet a friend for... Um, uh, we're going to go for um, um, uh, hot dogs and, uh, and ice cream. Yeah, I know I'm on a diet, but it's, uh, uh, it's a celebration. So I'm going to take one day out and splurge. So anyways, uh, thanks again for following along. Make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you again here in the hangar. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll record tomorrow. Bye.
the next day. Well, um, got a lot done today. Got the engine started. I think the last update I, uh, or last clip that I had there was of me saying the engine didn't start and it didn't. Uh, hopping in the vehicle, gonna be driving back home. Um, I've got some video of me doing a taxi test and uh, you will uh, be able to see that right about here. Wasn't that exciting? Oh, yes, taxi test. Taxi test did prove to me a couple of things. I have some squawks that I need to address. The brakes, biggest thing, the brakes. Um, these are the original cable actuated brakes on the pedal jumper floats. They don't hold. Squeeze as hard as you want. They're tight. Um, not even a quarter throttle and I'm rolling. Uh, slowing down, it's, it's it, no real difference. Uh, th those brakes are horrible. They're, um, they're a drum brake, cable actuated drum brakes. So um, I am going to be upgrading those brakes. I need to get a hold of Puddle Jumper and have them send the new wheels with the discs and the hydraulic brakes and uh, the much more. Yeah, we got to get done. Um, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> so. Brakes need to be replaced. Uh, on the other squawk, the third door that opens that um, allows me to get in and out. And I said, I'm ah, probably not going to put anything on there to hold it open. Doesn't need it. It needs it. One little tiny breeze and it goes slam, slams in on me as I'm trying to get in. I got to design something to hold that open while I'm getting in and out. Uh, because when I'm uh, taxing up to a, a boat dock or something or a beach and I need to get out and that thing slams on me. Yeah, it's going to cause problems. So that has to be done. Now that's not going to stop me from flying it. Uh, this taxi test is, um, is is just a preliminary, just see what, you know, what is. Uh, and and it was uh, it was very well worth doing um, just to see how things work. Everything works great except the brakes and that door hold open thing. Um, so yeah, that needs to be addressed and, uh, and will be addressed, uh, if I don't get the new brakes before, uh, it's ready to fly. I'm going to fly it. It'll, it, it will run. We hear it's a grass strip. It's long enough. It will stop. Um, but I'd rather not, I'd rather have properly working brakes. If you know what I mean? 
so if they arrive in two weeks, um, they get changed. It's going to take one day to change them. Swap the brakes out, put new ones in, bleed them down, and all that kind of stuff. So, so that's what's happening with uh, with the uh, uh, the Challenger and uh, taxi test. You got to see it. <laughs> uh, I even mounted the the cameras on the uh, on the wing and facing me, that kind of stuff, and. Um, as of recording this right now, I don't know whether I'm going to cut those pieces in uh, as part of the taxi test. I might. I don't know. Uh, if I did, great. If not, well, I did record it. So uh, I had two cameras going on the airplane while I was taxiing as well. And the other video of, of, from the outside were a couple of friends, uh, 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 Jeff and, uh, and James. Um, they were uh, the directors of the b-roll section i guess <laughs> thank you jeff and Ch thank you james for taking the uh, the videos they took it on the cell phones so i added that into the video as well anyways that's it for right now i will uh, close this video sitting in a van that's rare i don't think i've ever done this before um so take care uh we'll see you again here in the hangar and soon in the air keep your stick on the ice bye for now